Hi boys and girls, it's Mr. Wassman, and today we're looking at Homelinks 1.11. That's Unit 1, Lesson 11. We're dealing with geometry, line segments, lines, and rays. So let's dive right in. So the first question says, list at least five things in your home that remind you of line segments. Well, since I'm not uh, sitting in your house right now, I can't answer that for you or help you with that. So you need to look around your house and see if there's anything that has a beginning and an end to it that looks like a line segment. So let's uh, look at problem number two. Problem number two says, use a straight edge to complete... 2A says, draw and label line EF. And then 2B says, draw and label line segment EF. Well, what is the difference between a line and a line segment? Well, the difference is arrowheads. Let me explain. So I'm going to draw a pair of figures. There's one. And there's another. Now, to the untrained eye, these both look like lines. Okay, we use that word interchangeably when we often talk about line segments. So in geometry, what's the difference? Well, a line segment is a two-dimensional figure that has a definite starting and stopping point, or end points is what they're called. So when you look at the figure for 2B, if I make a line segment, there's going to be a dot on either end. So right here, as you can see, I've created a line segment, and I'm going to label those points E and F. Now the difference between a line segment and a line is that, uh, in theory, a line is an infinite uh, figure that goes on and on and on, which is why we represent it with arrowheads on both sides. So when we are dealing with a line, the idea is that you could go in both directions, or either direction, without stopping, and since the universe is theoretically infinite, that line would be able to extend infinitely as well. So for our purposes here, when you draw a line, you need to remember that that line has to have an arrowhead on both ends. Now, we've included some uh, points on this line, so unlike the line segment, which makes those points end points, um, these points on the line are just a, a stop along the way. So then when it asks you to explain how your drawings of line EF and line segment EF are different, you already have your answer. A line is a representation of infinity, uh, and the arrowheads tell us such, whereas the dots at the ends of the line segment tell us that you start and you stop. So when we get down to number three and it asks us to draw and label a ray, a ray is basically a hybrid of a line and a line segment. A ray is going to have a line segment base like so, but then you're going to create a endpoint on one side and mark an arrowhead on the other, like so. So it says, draw and label ray SR. So when you are labeling a ray, you always, always, always start with the first letter in the name, and that's what goes over your endpoint, S. And then R is just going to be a point somewhere along this ray. So we'll put it right here. Okay. So when you think of rays, I want you to think of the sun. You see the sun up in the sky, which is actually 93 million miles away from us, is a giant ball of burning hot gas, and it is emitting rays of sunshine. Those rays go in every which direction away from it. Okay, The sun is the end point, or the start Okay, and then the rays emit from every 
a possible direction away from the sun. So that's what a ray does, okay? But there has to be a starting point, okay? Line segments have starting and stopping points. Rays just have a starting point and then uh, go in one direction uh, for infinity. If you are a fan of the Toy Story movie franchise, uh, you'll be familiar with the character Buzz Lightyear, where he uh, often says, to infinity and beyond. That's an inside math joke uh, uh, made by the animators. There is nothing beyond infinity because infinity goes on forever, so you can't go beyond infinity. A little math humor for you there. Okay, finally, we're going to talk about this shape right here. Okay, uh, this is a trapezoid, and a trapezoid and all uh, polygons are basically made up of line segments. You probably didn't realize that. So when I look at this shape that has four corners, in reality, what I'm looking at are four line segments that intersect at vertices. A vertex is that endpoint where two line segments come together. Um, so that creates four line segments that can be labeled this way. Okay, we have SW that runs this way. We have XT that runs this way. We have WX and then we have ST like so. Okay, so the question posed to you are name the parallel line segments. Okay, now it would be helpful to know what the word parallel means. Well, parallel means that if lines were to go on through infinity, uh, if lines are parallel, they would never cross or intersect. Okay, parallel lines would never intersect. Now, lines that are not parallel would at some point intersect. So if you look at... Uh, SW, for example, you'll notice that this line segment is at an angle, and then if you were to extend that line out, you're going to see that you can kind of imagine the paths would cross with XT. So SW, or WS, and XT, or TX, are not parallel because at some point they would intersect right about here. However, line segments WX, or XW, or ST, or TS, they don't intersect. If you were to extend those line segments farther and farther, you will notice that the distance between them remain the same. You know, with the exception of my shaky hand drawing them with a stylus, the space between these lines remains constant, which means that they are parallel. Theoretically, they should never cross. Okay, So, to answer this question here, name the parallel line segments. They would be WX and ST. Okay. Now, before I let you go, let's look at these subtraction problems. We just did subtraction with uh, a lesson one nine. So this is practice, this is review. This is a uh, spiraling uh, review that's gonna remind you, hey, you might have to remember this stuff. So we'll just do, well, let's do problem number six. Okay, 662 minus 497. Now, if I estimate about how big that answer should be, 662 rounds up to 700. 497 would round up to 500. So if I were to subtract 7 minus 5, that's going to give me 200. 200. So my answer should be about 200. So when I subtract, um, when I look at this problem, okay, I'm noticing that the bottom digits, 7 and 9, are bigger than the top digits of 2 and 6. So I can't subtract 7 minus 2. I have to borrow. I'd have to borrow from the tens. But there's not enough tens to lend either. So I have to borrow all the way from the hundreds. So I'm going to take one of my hundreds from 6. 6 minus 1 is 5. And then I'm going to lend it to the tens. 
One hundred is ten tens. So ten tens plus six tens is going to give me sixteen tens. However, i got to borrow some ones to lend to the ones place value. So I'm going to take one of the tens, making sixteen into fifteen tens. And I'm going to change two ones into twelve ones because one ten is basically ten ones. So now I have 500 plus 15 tens plus 12 ones. Now, just for uh, the sake of argument, if I take 5 hundreds and 15 tens, otherwise known as 150, and 12 ones, otherwise known as 12, and if I were to add those back together, that would give me my original number, 662. So I've just translated 662 in a more friendly uh, amount that's going to allow me to borrow and regroup. So here we go. 12 minus 7 is going to leave me with 5. 15 tens minus 9 tens is going to leave me with 6 tens. And then 5 minus 4 is 1. So my answer is 165. Now, if I were to round 165 to the nearest 100, that would round up to 200. So my estimate is pretty close. If you have any questions about geometry, subtraction, or even about the Toy Story movie franchise, feel free to reach out to me or your math teacher. Otherwise, we will talk again soon. Thank you.